Good morning, friends. I wanted to make a short video talking about week one of Tone Up. So um, we met this morning, the live group, and we had a great meeting, and I tried to record it, but um, my iPad was too far away, and you couldn't hear the sound. So I'm doing this again, and I'm not much of a vlogger, so you're going to have to um, bear with all my weird um, mannerisms while staring at myself in the video cam. The thing that inspired this whole um, study was, um, as I stated in the first blog post, my husband and I went to visit a friend's church um, over Christmas, and it was during a time when, um, for Christmas break, we were all home and it had been kind of getting on each other's nerves a lot, and I'd been pretty negative to the kids, and um, in general, our home was not a uh, happy place in spite of the happy time of year. So also, just as an aside, if you hear honking in the background, it's because our new puppy is chewing her puppy toy and it squeaks. Okay, back to the topic. So um, this sermon that our friend preached had to do with words. And he, he remarked on the fact that he'd done some reading of various studies and found that we, the average person, receives six negative messages for every one positive message. Well, that really surprised me and didn't surprise me because I, as a mom, find myself saying a lot more sort of criti criticizing, um, discouraging, reminding, and not necessarily a very um, positive voice. Um, versus every one time I might say, good job, or thank you. And the verse that he focused on was Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. And that scripture is, here we go. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And for me, because I'd never thought about that um, verse having to do with words, it really struck me that, you know, when we think of generosity, we think of giving something that we have, a possession. And so sometimes we excuse our lack of generosity because we don't think we have something. You know, I might not be very generous with money at times if I have no money. Um, or I might not invite a lot of people to stay in my home because I don't have a lot of space in my home to invite people. But our words are something that we have in abundance. I'm loquacious and I have lots of words, but many of them are not very refreshing. And so this passage really challenged me that um, I could be more generous with my words and I have an abundant supply of them. I'm not gonna run out um, and that those generous, those words that I give out freely, whether they be praise or encouragement, are going to come back to me. Uh, similarly with the negative ones, and that's what I was picking up on. We talked about this morning the fact that as a mother, I will occasionally hear my kids saying something to one another, and it's, it's my voice. It's what I say to them, and they're saying it to each other, and I do not like the way it sounds because... Um, I, he I hear the negativity in my voice or I hear the disparaging tone that I wish they wouldn't use with each other. Um, they're picking up on what, they're picking up what we're putting down, so to speak. So I wanna be putting down and setting a tone and um, establishing a voice in my home that's one that I really want them to emulate. In the past, when the, the Holy Spirit has convicted me about my words, which happens a lot because I talk a lot, um, I've felt sort of overwhelmed by how much there is to do, how much I have to change. Um, you know, like I can never stop complaining or I could never quit gossiping. I've basically been negative about how negative I am. But the this time, I really felt like the Holy Spirit said something different to me and it wasn't... Um, get rid of the negative speech. It was change that ratio. Instead of it being six negative to one positive, what if you just made it, you know, don't necessarily eliminate saying, you need to clean up your room or don't use that tone of voice with your sister, which are things that I sometimes need to say. Um, 
I need to increase the number of positive things that I say to them. So for that, um, we're using a little uh, visual aid, which I foolishly started this video without getting the visual aid. So I'm just gonna go get it and then I'm gonna come right back. So my friend in his talk had on the stage at the church, oh, Pepper, get down, um, had this big vase and, oh, Pepper, <laughs> we have a new puppy. Pepper, get down. Um, and as he was giving illustrations of positive or negative speech, he was filling this vase with either a black stone for the negative speech or a white stone for the positive speech. Well, I decided that in our home, um, at least for the course of this study, we're gonna use a similar visual aid as a way of keeping accountability for me and for my kids um, to what the tone of our home is. So I found this little glass jar. You could use any kind of clear um, jar or Tupperware or whatever that's see-through. And I got, instead of getting stones, I just got some white, dry white beans and dry black beans at Aldi. And the white beans, the northern beans, are a little bigger, so that will represent how much more powerful the positive speech is. And I told the kids that, um, now my kids are a little older, they're six, eight, and 10, so if you have young kids, you may need to adapt this to however um, will be a good visual aid for your family and a reminder for you as, as um, we do this study. But when we hear somebody in, the, in our home using a tone that we see as negative, we can put a black bean in. Um, so if your kids see your tone as negative or their siblings tone as negative or discouraging or mean, they can put a black bean in. If you see your own tone as negative, you can also put a black bean in for yourself if you're convicted of it. The white beans are for positive speech, for grateful speech, for helpful speech, for kind speech. And, um, We've only been doing this less than 24 hours and already my kids have enjoyed um, and I think been ma made more aware of getting credit for being kind, being thoughtful, being grateful. I did tell them that they couldn't give themselves a bean for being positive. Somebody else had to notice it. Um, so it's made me wanna notice more when they're kind to each other and tell them, I'm giving you, I'm giving you a white bean for um, being kind. So you could make this something more fun like M&M's or um, chocolate or um, I don't know if there's other variations of this activity you want to try. But we're going to do this as a way of um, keeping ourselves accountable, seeing what's going on um, visually instead of just hearing it. You know, if this gets to be too full of uh, black beans, we're going to know that um, something's not quite right. And that, oh, that's also to do with the whole idea of keeping the ratio six positive to one negative. So in our group, we started by going around and introducing ourselves, sharing one negative thing that maybe um, caused us to want to do this study, and six positive things about our lives, whether they're our family or our home or whatever we wanted to share that was um, good. And you could, if you decide to do this with a group or if you're doing this with a friend, you can try the same as a way of kickstarting that I, approach of looking at things from a positive perspective. Um, the second thing that we're going to do as a group is a weekly memory verse, and or actually two memory verses. So they're both going to be on the Facebook page. This week, um, we have the Proverbs first that I already read, and then Matthew 12, 34. We're just doing the, the second portion that says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And at least one of the two verses that we memorize each week are going to be um, for your kids. And there will be a song linked that will associate with that verse. So you can play that in your house to help your kids and yourself memorize the song, um, and therefore the verse. When we um, met, we all wrote down the verses, 
this is probably backwards, but um, we wrote down the verse for the first time and then we're going to mail these to each other. So if you're in the online group and you would like to um, have the verses mailed to you during the week to encourage you, send by email or through Facebook your address to me. Um, and we can get you in the loop either by having you online people send the verses to one another or we can loop you in with the live group. Um, next week when we meet, everyone is gonna have to write down these verses from memory on a card and then also record the new verse. So each week we're going to have that accountability that we will be asked to write down these verses straight out of our heads um, onto the card and then they'll be mailed again for the next week. So that's another way we're gonna push out negativity by putting in um, God's word into our hearts. So those are the two activities we're doing. Um, in subsequent weeks, I'll be doing more teaching, looking at places in scripture and how words are used and how we can incorporate those into our homes. So I hope those two activities with the um, index cards and the bean jars will help you to just start toning up the... Um, the voice in your home. Let me know if you have any ideas or suggestions or variations to any of these ideas or what you're doing and finding um, helpful in your homes as you work towards changing the tone. Thanks. Bye. Have a great week.